Good afternoon and welcome to the Altered Book Art Making Workshop. <clears throat> I'm here today with a couple of our favorite presenters here at the county in the arts, Dennis Johnson and Joan Black, and they've put together this presentation for you. And it's just an hour, we're very brief, but really it's an introduction. They do a lot of uh, research on the history of different types of art forms and present it to you. And we'll send you those slides so you can use them in your own classroom if you'd like to launch this lesson with your students. And we have a real diverse group of attendees. So we have lots of art teachers, but we also have teachers that teach different subjects. So we leave it to you to adapt this uh, as it best suits your needs for whatever it is you're teaching. And we feel like this is a highly adaptable art form. Um, it's very personal. So the book uh, that you make is very creative and, and individual. And I think it really fits in nicely with our um, desire to incorporate social and emotional learning into what we're teaching. And I also love the piece that it's fairly inexpensive. This is found materials and you're using old books that and giving them a new life. So I was just saying as someone who loves books and art, this is like um, um, an embarrassment of riches. It's like all that good stuff together. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so um, we're going to kick it off and uh, Rebecca and Liliana are on the call assisting us and we'll, I'll keep an eye on the chat and away we go. Okay. Dennis and Joan. All right. Okay. Thank you, Louisa. Joan. Thank you very much, Louisa. And also thank you to the group of students and teachers who are here with us today. As you may know, we are welcoming to you, but it all starts with you welcome us and give us guidance and help us on the pathway of education. So we appreciate the hard work, the thoughts that are challenging, the ideas and how they can be applied. And you bring the learning and the sharing events. Thank you very much. We're a little bit spontaneous now. <laughs> so we, we did wanna thank Louisa and her staff uh, for inviting us back. Uh, we really enjoy um, putting these on and learning. Uh, Joan, quite frankly, has done a lot more altered books than I have, but I got very busy uh, the past <laughs> month. Hard work, hard work. And, um, you know, we, we as art teachers, at art, as artists, and just as teachers in general, realize how important the creative act and art is in our, in our own lives as well as in those of our students for the social, emotional, and intellectual health of our students. And I would, although I'm sure he's not um, here on, the, on our webinar, I would like to thank my high school art teacher, <laughs> Mr. Bassett, who encouraged me and was inspiring to me to go into art. But the most important thing he did, he convinced my mom that art was a career and that I could make a career out of it. So thank you, Mr. Bassett. <laughs> That's nice that you remember him each time you do. I hope all of us teachers have somebody that remembers us fondly the same way. So obviously uh, today's art workshop explores the art um, altered books. We're gonna show you a little bit of the history, show you some contemporary examples for inspiration and then hear from you in the last uh, 15, 20 minutes in terms of your thoughts and maybe even some uh, progress that you've done on your book. Perhaps some practical applications as well. So I'm looking at these and you kind of, the one on the right is a little bit hidden, but you can get an idea. What's going on with these? How are these similar, Joan? Can you tell me? You know, <laughs> I sound it the same way. What about this, huh? Huh? It looks pretty weird. Um, <laughs> we think that what happens is you stop thinking about how different things are and you start thinking about how many things are the same or have some parts that are the same. And this then helps us while we're bringing things in that are gonna be part of the deciding issues. Well, and what, what this is really doing, and you can see in terms of the text below, the evolution of, in the history and evolution of the altered book. Uh, we want to share as much information as we can today in our hour. And as Louise, uh, Louisa was pointing out, 
This is a much broader art form. Um, it's not going to be done in one hour. It's not going to be done in 15 minutes. So we hope this information, this little history perspective, will give you some ideas about how you can fold this into your classroom. So now we're going to jump ahead a little bit with the teachers who were a powerful influence in our lives and becoming artists. Now, Dennis has taken the, the mantle. Is it? <laughs> taking the lead. No, <laughs> taking I, the lead, baby. No, we're I, taking the lead. I would say paintbrush. Let's just leave it like that. Okay, so. okay. I knew you'd have something. So the paintbrush of the powerful influence of becoming artists. And my artist is a woman named Cheryl Cunning who is from Southern California and was, has passed, but was one of the most fascinating teachers that I had in art. And my parents were like, well, it's better than other things kids can do when they're teenagers. <laughs> so we uh, kind of settled down and started working with art and the handmade paper and the dyeing was the part that really grabbed me. <clears throat> So um, in order, in making altered books, uh, obviously you start out usually with an old book and we're giving this book a new life as a personal piece of art, as a personalized statement. The process of altering books can be involve cutting, painting, pasting, folding, stitching. I have a whole list here. Sewing, <laughs> beading, stamping, collage, and much more. And, and much more. with the material list, you just see, just kind of scratching the surface of things that you can use to approach this medium. We would point out, and we'll explain this a little bit more um, after our presentation, that hardback books are best to use and try to have your students avoid paperback books. And we'll explain that at the end. I think it's heartbreaking when things fall apart. That's something. Well, and that's it in a nutshell, they fall apart. <laughs> <clears throat> Some altered book artists choose to work within a certain theme throughout the pages of the book, while others see each other as a work of art that stands on its own. Joan and I found endless possibilities and approaches to this art form. There are excellent resources. We have a list at the end of this presentation, which Louisa will share with you, um, both online as well as in print resources. And believe me, there are even, even more um, than we have, but these are the ones that we thought were the best and we use for this presentation. Yes really terrific. <clears throat> Most altered book binders, book artists work in <clears throat> old unwanted books, used bookstores and flea markets and estate sales and library book sales. When I was making the list, Dennis's nose kind of went up like, ooh, this is going to be interesting. I'm not a big flea market person. <laughs> <laughs> Clean is the word clean is the word we like. We look in books that if not used at the library or other places that that material can come in for very low cost. If not for that, these items would be shredded and recycled and maybe never have another life. It's a sad tale, but it's true. In preparing um, for this presentation as we delve into the history of altered books. We found it both fascinating and as we will see, controversial. Oh, we get to see this part. Pal Umsa. Altering books began as a way to recycle valuable parchment made from animal skins. In the 11th century, monks dissolved or scraped the ink off of the old manuscripts and added their own text and illustrations. Reusing parchment was both cost-effective and durable enough for us to keep the process moving. Only the wealthiest and the clergy had access to these rewritten texts. 
which meant it really limited the number of people outside who, if are not in the wealthiest groups, don't have a way to read. And with this illustration, you can see the manuscript that was scraped off. It's still uh, somewhat visible uh, and the newer manuscript added. So fortunately, advances in imaging technology have revealed many ancient manuscripts that are under um, early, uh, later manuscripts. So original text has been uncovered leading to very exciting and um, interesting finds. Hmm. <clears throat> the manuscript is a Byzantine prayer book from the 13th century, which was assembled using pages from several earlier manuscripts. One of these manuscripts obtained <clears throat> and contained several treatises by the great Greek mathematician Archimedes that was copied in the 10th century. And the red rectangle, which I added, so I guess I might be altering this book, you are. <laughs> uh, is uh, from the original manuscript of Archimedes. <clears throat> so these man, many of these manuscripts, the underlying were written in extinct languages or thought just to be unimportant. They were valued primarily for the uh, parchment and their potential for scraping off and adding new manuscripts, new texts. New parchment, because of the process of tanning that was from animal hides, was an expensive commodity at this time. And it was difficult to obtain, especially for monks, um, lowly monks that are in a monastery writing these manuscripts away. They didn't have the wealth uh, to obtain new parchment. So fortunately for many of them, the monastery had an extensive library that they could just go and take a manuscript that thought was no longer needed. And as the text says in the slide, the, the obsolete text being gone, this monk felt that this particular manuscript would enrich countless spiritual lives uh, at, the, at the current time. So they were, I think, a devotion that feeling closer to God by scraping off old text and putting on new text. And I think they probably felt like they were in a time of great transition as we often do ourselves. I also think you could think of it as recycling, right? They're, yes. right. Yeah. They're taking right. precious resources yeah. and, and even our line. Go right. ahead. I mean, it, it, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Just it's thinking about that. Hard for us to conceive, I mean, I think of teachers of using a book this way or certainly something that is, you know, made in the 10th or 11th century, and then just, you know, destroying it and writing over it. But the reality at that time, it was just considered not important. And what I have to say now is more important than that. So it is a very interesting phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're kind of jumping ahead to another part of Grangerism. Uh, or, uh, another part of altered books, which is called Grangerism. I think this is like a term that students will really go for. Latch on I mean, to. it just seems like, oh, something's up with this, with this term. So Joan, you wanna talk a little bit about this? I'll talk about it a little bit. If we laugh, please stay with us. <laughs> Grangerism was named after Reverend Joseph Granger. <clears throat> this is in the 18th century. He was an English writer whose biological, not biological, that was my error, biographic history of England, 1769, included blank pages for isolations to be supplied by the reader. So uh, a reader could come in and write their own memories, make their own history, maybe do their own illustrations. Mm -hmm. 
So it continues, Grangerism continues uh, in um, the United States and elsewhere in the world. Uh, in the 19th century, people started using uh, books uh, as kind of a scrapbook. Uh, I'm almost thinking like we all probably have a family cookbook. So, you know, mm -hmm. in some ways that's an mm -hmm. awesome book because, you know, think about the little notes or like, you know, don't use so much sugar or, you know, clippings and stuff that is put in this kind of family cookbook to pass along to and generations. And travel vacations as right. well. Yeah. yeah. Um, the practice of Grangerism though, it seemed to me that was really ahead of its time. This is a an interactive, a Victorian kind of interactive book where people were responding to what was the text was, but then adding their own uh, stories, their own memories, their own, and making it very personal. Let's consider how we get information today. We're using the internet, we're using the web. So it's not a very linear type of learning. We go from one page to the next or to another website. Mm -hmm. So we're getting information, we're doing research, we're filling out forms. And those and tax forms. Let's, <laughs> let's not forget responding to social media uh, in today's day. And I, I really think this practice of Grangerism was a very early form of Wikipedia. I have not found that anywhere, but uh, <laughs> no I'm still working on it. that. No proof of it. <clears throat> Boy, are you committed. <laughs> Dennis and I found that the cutout sections in samples that we had could provide an inserted envelope and a letter that would be very interesting. The correspondence is something saved and something to be remembered. These examples can be seen at the Huntington Library and the Botanical Gardens, and it's well worth being there and having a visit. But it's more to it than that when you find out that the correspondence that we share with our friends is another old fashioned traditional way of writing and passing things on. And we do it every month. We do a few little pieces of literature writing <laughs> and we encourage you to try that out too. It's called writing a letter. Uh, it's, <laughs> it is, it is. I think that, <laughs> Um, but it's an opportunity. <laughs> when you can see the full slide of this book, it's very interesting on the right-hand side of the yes. page because there is an envelope that's been adhered into the book. There's a letter that's kind of sticking out uh, from that um, envelope. So it's it's a very, again, a very interactive uh, and very, personal. And very personalized way that this book became even though it's it's something that may not relate to the family, it became very personal to the family. And I think the fact that these several of these examples are at the Huntington Library makes me want to go there again and just you know look at these <laughs> in person. So oh. here is the book. No, that's that's right. Oh, so here's oh, this okay. book that someone used for their stamp collection. Uh, which, what's not pictured um, because of the um, window screens, uh, the participants, is the stamps on the right side follow the margin. So the text is preserved, but clearly they use this for other than its intended purpose. Huh. We as artists and probably as teachers, there's always critics. Always. And not everyone was pleased with this practice of Grangerism. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is Victorian <laughs> times, critics called Grangerization, a monstrous practice of hungry and greedy book collectors. So there, that's putting them in the place. Right? Now, if you want more uh -oh. along those lines, go to your computer. There's a few <laughs> things that we're gonna go with the Victorians and let them handle. We're also interested in keeping the inspiration as the word of the day, moving, shaking, 
looking ahead, growing, being inspired. It's all here in Word of the Day. Let's take a look at some contemporary examples of altered books along with student examples. We hope you have fun with this. As we're going through this, we always want to know if you're having fun, if you're having a good time, if you're learning anything. So keep that in mind, I will want to know. And I know everybody here will join in on that. <laughs> your, they'll, then you'll be your own critics, I think. So <laughs> approaches to altering books are as varied as the artist who craft them. A textile artist or quilter may choose to use fabric, which is the case on mm -hmm. the left, mm -hmm. uh, to alter their books, while a rubber stamper, and yes, you certainly can use rubber stamps, might opt to stamp, use inks, sprays, acrylic inks. Again, it's wide open. In Joan's approach to altered books, she does a lot of folding as you will see, but he also uh, inserts uh, handmade paper that she has made and maybe watercolored or sewn together. Uh, so we'll look forward to seeing some of those examples. <clears throat> so as Dennis was saying, a painter could look at a book <clears throat> as a canvas for several works in acrylic and watercolor and oils. Each artist brings their own materials. We hope that you're all feeling comfortable and situated. If you're not, let's have you swoop in and get materials that will work for you. And here are two examples. Uh, and I think the one on the right is just a really incredible example that they took the theme of these books and used them. They worked with the theme of the book, um, mm -hmm. obviously. Fahrenheit uh, 451. Fantastic. Now here are two examples of just the opposite case where the artist that used, that worked on these books didn't go with a theme. They, they, it's almost like they worked on a blank canvas. So there wasn't blank canvas, there was text on it. But and it the, was treated that way. And, but the point being is that um, the theme of the book probably has no relation to the outcome of the art piece. In fact, the one uh, example on the left, the stack of four books that paint has been poured on, probably are not even able to open anymore. So she's using this as a very sculptural art piece that still says book. We can still certainly identify book, but it's no longer, um, we have no idea what these books are. What we're are. gonna do with them, we don't know. <laughs> So we are looking ahead and seeing that there are more student book cover examples. I have heard that there are a number here in town as well. And I think, I think this goes back to an earlier point that, you know, this is such a broad range of, of topic. The fact that you can approach it with so many different materials, you can come up students can come up with their own themes. Um, they can be somewhat random. It can be almost like a day book. It could be uh, Instagram for, yes. for a day only, only in an art form. Um, and so there's, there's just a lot of possibilities and students can really explore this medium and come up with very creative ideas. So this is the time where if you haven't already started walking the walk and doing your work with a smile on your face, <laughs> Louisa will tell you when it's time to share your experiences. Experiments open doors and create new approaches. Paper folding or experimentation is really a lot of fun. And three-dimensional materials and outcomes will be available here. We can look and see. Folding pages with a bone is something that you might find. This, there's three things that are so simple, but important. Here's the bone. What did you call that, Joan? It's a bone, B-O-N-E. Okay. And never heard of that. 
it's it's used a lot in um, bookmaking, in printmaking, in uh, projects where you want something that has a very finely finished uh, edge. Okay. And then we have the pencil. <laughs> now you're you're thinking that is so wacky. We have had over the years a number of calls about where do I get pencils? Do I get? <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> and Dennis said they won't believe you, and I said, "Well, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's." It's not shocking, like something terrible, but it's for teachers. It is that seems yeah. unbelievable. For teachers, it's a nightmare. <laughs> now, this is the final one. If you're going to do books and create books, one of the things that works very well is any a hole, punch. A hole punch, so that you can feed it with threads and have something oh. quite efficient. This one I brought because it's interesting in that it's just a round circle. There's a bunch you can get at Michael's that are heart shape or other things so that it's something that's to them available mm -hmm. for other items. We actually have this book available um, <laughs> not for sale. <laughs> not it's for not sale. like I was going that way. No, we have. We can show Scared you the, the physical book. This this would be a great opportunity to pass it around if sure. uh, mm. we were in, uh, you know, in in, in, a, in, in uh, live the, live the, next the, time. The, yeah, next time. Uh, and one of the last examples. It's another book that Joan did, just somewhat simple folding, although as you accumulate more and more pages, it becomes more complex. And what she's doing is adding, we mentioned that she does handmade paper. So she's adding handmade paper to uh, the inside cover. Um, and again, yeah, we'll, we'll do it on when we do the full screen. Okay. And um, so it's just, just a really interesting um, way that, um, that she works. Mm, definitely. So here's another wonderful student example. So so sweet, so charming. Uh, so we're going to um, now uh, go back to. We're going to stop sharing our screen. And well, hi fast. everyone. Woo. Great to see you. Um, <laughs> so what we would like to do, Louisa, if it's all right, probably to maybe um, let me pin you. Yeah, let's. Um, if we could enlarge yeah. it a little so, bit. Yeah, so you can, sh like, I'm dying to see. So I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes of work okay. time for all, all right. of us. And I know I'm really interested to see Joan's folding techniques because I don't have a clue how to do that all right. at this point. So if at any time, um, so why don't you show them this one? Uh -huh. so. I invite the rest of you, please. Um, you can mute us if you'd like, but, you, you know, or mute yourself but have your own music going um, as you're creating. And we'll just, we'll be talking and doing some demo um, as you're making art, if that's okay. Sure. Great. Sure. Um, okay. So this is um, one of the books that uh, was in uh, process that, that mm. you saw. And you can, you can see uh, what I- I what found I this book in Oakland on a hill in the rain. And I said, <laughs> oh, Cool. Look at that. And of course, I'm saying, don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. It, <laughs> it's probably it. dirty. And, it's just like your mom would and, say. <laughs> no, but of course, you're going to find this in the rain because the name of it is Swan Watch. Wow. So, so I'm sure it didn't make the top 10 list of whenever it was published. But mm -hmm. what it makes the top 10 list now is because the interplay between text pages and the oh, pictures blur yes. and black and white. Yes. And those so, aren't pictures you added, those are pictures in the book? Those They're are pictures in the oh. book about swans. Now we did cut and paste some from this book to itself, but okay. not out okay. in the street hunting right. up. You wanna show them uh, another one of your folds and sure. maybe, maybe unfold it 
just just to get an idea of how how you feel. So bring it. Let's bring it up. Okay. Can you explain how you do this? Sure. There's no pages right in here. Yeah. But take one from up front. Okay. Okay, I have just. Let me hold it up if I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there you go. All I do is start with a single fold under. Can you lift it up a little bit, Dennis? Please? Sure. Thank you. Okay, this okay. Here, single mm -hmm. page, and you say, okay, I'm going to fold this way. Fold it back. Mm -hmm. Fold it, and it's probably going to have a little bump, like a lot of times they do. And here's my bone, and I say, okay, this, if I, if I just use something like a, the side of a smooth pressure or something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this gives you a lot of pressure and it's even and it's. And it won't tear the paper. Smooth. It doesn't tear. <clears throat> right. mm -hmm. And you can go to the next one and you can get a very close mm -hmm. positioning after you've done this here. Then you continue on. And sometimes we'll take this and do multiple pages or make one and then come back and say, I think I'd like it more if I shortened this and came back. And then this, if you pass this, you'll see it's not. Right, it's not crisp. The edge is not, not crisp. That's right. It's not <clears throat> And it is very frustrating if you do it for a long period of time. Well, it would make the, the book very fat, right? That, that it would be very fluffy. Right. Like that, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And some people love that. Mm -hmm. And so the choice, you know, is folding pages simply in half. And then on these pages, she just took the end of the book and folded it. Let's see, it's hard to see probably. See, Can you open that one back up? Yeah. So here it is opened up. And then she just took the edge of it. Interesting. Put it back in. And then reverse the process here. And then, so the top is folded down. Are, are there measurements being done to keep it consistent or is she eyeballing? I'm eyeballing. <laughs> well, you pretty much uh, go towards the binding of the book. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty consistent. And if you do a lot of lines and you use a bone, you're gonna get a really nice, strong edge. You know, were, you, were you creating a pattern or are you just doing it as you felt? So the whim or the- On this, mood? I was following uh, what I thought was the dream of the duck. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, that well, explains everything. Miserable. I'm in this box. As we said, we approach art from very, very different perspectives. <laughs> Dennis is like, you can take that. This would have had a pattern. It would have been well, measured. So this one, again, she folded like here and then folded it back down. Again, okay. okay. Like the binding. And, and it came it, right on the edge. Okay. Did I see some pages hole punched? And if so, why? What was what were we going to do with that? That's interesting to me because I've never used a hole punch in in this practice in this art making. Oh, punch! Because you said something about threading. Yes, yeah. I'm interested in that. Maybe you could demonstrate that for us. Uh, do we have any? Well, you had some here. So I think she just. Um, I mean, if well, I noticed holes in the pages in that book that you were just demoing. Right. So. Um, what did you decide to do the hole punch? Just to add texture? Or? With the hole punch, I just was demoing. Okay. So that you could see that there were more things than one that would be successful for you. So you take this and punch three places and have thread go up, down, up, down. And that makes it secure. You can do different knots mm -hmm. along the way and that will make it possible 
to connect with something like this. And the reason I use this kind of thing is it's so much easier on your hands than just trying to cut it out by hand. I don't know how you, it wouldn't be safe. <laughs> right. well, and with scissors, it's, I tried it out. I wanted to be sure it looked horrible. It mm. was worse than I thought. So here, here's a book that I work, worked on. And you can see, I used a hole punch here. And the reason oh, okay. I did that was, my whole thing was to have cut out windows of various sizes, various shapes. Did you measure, good. did you measure them, Dennis? No. Really? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was yeah. very late. Um, <laughs> No, I, you know, I think that's part of it. I, you know, I started out, this was fairly, um, you know, it's, it it's loose. centered mm -hmm. with the page. But after that, I just started cutting because you're not, you're really not sure what's going to be revealed. And that's kind of the fun part of it. Right. And then um, I took an older book, as you can see, really, really fairly old, very different type of text mm -hmm. illustrations and compose here. use that in you can use this parts and compose here it. so you can see it kind of coming through here. Right. Okay. And then using, just tearing it out of the book. Yes, tearing it out of the book and pasting it here with this kind of going arch. So, so there, there are two things. There are two things that I uh, several things that appealed to me in this book. First of all, I like the size. It's in somewhat of a square. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Time Life series, if we remember those. Oh wow, I remember those. <laughs> yeah, yes, and um, I paint landscapes, so I um, was attracted to this just almost as subject matter. Um, and um, I just, uh, I like the idea of combining this kind of slick, glossy surface with this other type of material, this kind of older paper, gray, and drawings. So it's kind of the combination of a lot of factors uh, for me. And, you know, we might talk about the size of books um, we tend to, uh, we may have a preconceived idea about what size we want to do, but you may not find that size. If you're just looking for in a used bookstore or a library sale, you're going to kind of have to go with, with what's available. But something like Joan has picked out, just a very nondescript book about swans um, becomes a very exciting piece when it's folded. And it's meaningful for me, for us, uh, <clears throat> for the kids in the rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is this is a book that I altered. This is uh, I got this uh, for family album. It's Waro bound, and oh, okay. uh, I cut uh, my uh, son's camera, his Instamatic, in half. <laughs> I didn't realize he wasn't quite finished with that. So that's still a little bit. It's the Lion King. I think he's finished. <laughs> he was a little traumatized. He's a grown that. man. <laughs> and uh, here's another. Um, Wait, what was inside of it? Were you going to show something inside that book, Dennis? It, it's um, family photos. It's just. Oh, okay. Oh, so you made a photo album that was photo with album. a camera. Both right. sides. That's the camera. Oh, yeah. More to come, obviously. I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did want to point out one thing. You want to show the pen one? Um, yeah, if, we, if there's time. Okay. So we talked earlier about using books that are not, the binding is not glued. That's why paperbacks mm -hmm. are really not uh, very good to use because when you start working with them, you start opening them up and go from page to page, the pages will begin to uh, disintegrate and be very easily removed from the binding. 
what you want to look for in a book is called a sewn spine. And you can identify it very easily by the headband, which is in a book. And this process is where signatures, usually 16 pages is a signature, is folded together and then sewn into the binding of the book. And you can kind of see how the book separates with, and those are signatures. But this gives the book uh, a lot of flexibility and able to work with Survive, it. Survive, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. Very good tip. So um, I don't know if you want to open we it have, up now. We have about three more minutes if okay. you have more examples to show. OK. Um, let's see. I think Joan does. Let's see. Um, we were going to show another folded book. This is a good one to look at before it's been painted. Reminds mm -hmm. me of origami, Joan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, it does. And, and we are influenced that way. So I think it's it's interesting. She just has a kind of sense mm -hmm. about, <clears throat> about folding. And, and you might, you know, to me, to my mind, it might be a little bit arbitrary, but I think she ultimately kind of knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just just this kind of fold is, I think, a very very interesting spread. Mm -hmm. And it's elegant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, where do you buy a bone, Joan? Where Where did you shop for something like that? Crafts, art store. I was in Missoula, and it was a fabric store. <clears throat> fabric store. Okay. Yeah. Just, I'm not familiar. I want to get one. So okay. Yeah. They. At first, when I went to look for it, I think it was like eight bucks or something. And I thought, that's crazy. But it is <laughs> so fantastic. It's got your eight bucks worth out of it. Yes. And then with this, where we have the papers folded back and forth, and then some not folded yet at all, other than half size, mm -hmm. different things here make it so that before very much time has gone by, a student could take care of this in right. some way or another, in some way or another could decide to make their own work here. Mm -hmm. Louisa, $6.89 on Amazon. <laughs> no. oh, thank you. You've already ordered yours. We're not even done with the class. She is no, honored. actually, I already have some. Thank oh. you. <laughs> thank you. Do you, have, do you have the... Uh, all teachers have that. We love that. <laughs> yeah. So I would just say one one more thing about this book and in general, um, don't throw anything away. And I've learned that the hard way because I, <laughs> I tend to be a little bit neater than Joan when I work. <laughs> and uh, so I would start, you know, recycling things mm -hmm. because where did that go? I was going to use that. What school so, did you take that to? So I have I have learned, I have amended my ways. <laughs> and so, like, for example, from this book, this is an illustrate our photo that came from this Time Life series. I really wanted to use the circle as another shape to incorporate. But hey, I'm going to save this because I may use it a little bit yeah. later. Yeah. And you set up not only in terms of you identify the photo, you identify it's black and white, the type of tree it is but also you establish a kind of positive, negative, and a shape association. So mm -hmm. all of these things help oh. for you to be consistent. In the book. Right. I noticed, um, so um, Taria, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. She has kindly put a link in the chat for those of us who are ready to go and buy that tool. So wow. I that. Wow. Thank um, and I, I really love this. Uh, art approach because I think it's akin to collage in a way and that it's accessible and a lot of times people are intimidated you know I, I don't know how to draw or I don't know how to paint and in this that doesn't happen that can happen here or maybe it doesn't like the folding that's totally new to me I never did that in altered books and I also think that maybe it's something that appeals to like our secondary students because it's a little bit naughty right like you're taking a book and you're <laughs> doing stuff and ooh, right. you know but you're actually creating something that's really beautiful and to be treasured right. so 
we just gave you about 15 minutes um, to work and we realize that's just a little bit of work time and just the very beginning. And this is a long-term kind of project that you would do over many sessions um, for sure. But we wanna take this time to, let me put on gallery view to invite uh, anyone who's been working on one previously now or today to share it with the group because we always find inspiration from each other. And I'm always blown away by what our participants make. So is there anybody who's willing to um, put camera on and show us uh, what they've done this afternoon or what they have done prior to now? Louisa, you were showing some very nice. I, I was, I was. Okay, well, let's, I could go last. So I see. Okay. Ah. Let me, let me get this one. Oops. How do I? Okay, let me pin this one. Okay, there we go. All right. Look at that beautiful book. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Can you unmute and tell us a little bit about what you have there? Um, is that me, Cindy Essenwine? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So this one, I, I joined late because I teach until four. Yeah. <laughs> so uh -huh. This one I made a while ago, and I was really excited to be able to join and see what you guys were doing. So I was glad I got to see Dennis and Jones share because those are amazing. This was a book, um, it's Pajama Time. Mm -hmm. It was my daughter's book that fell into the tub years ago, and I <laughs> altered it. Um, and so I did a bunch of drawing and glitter, and um, I found a bunch of stuff on my desk at school, and I was um, just showing my students how we could take something and change it up. And I love glitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> and so I, you know, just, again, just found a bunch of things. Um, and it was like a little treasure trove of things that Sophie oh, and I That's cute. It's yeah, so cute. Very nice. Um, and things, wallpaper. This is a little picture of Sophie. Aww. And it's one of our favorite books, too. Um, and so it was like you said, like capturing uh, memories and moments um, mm -hmm. that, you know, you share with, you know, your kids or whatever, and then some are not, and then it's like little pajama time character brushing his teeth. <laughs> um, and, you know, I like cutting out too and using mirror a lot of my work um, and just playing around with scraps and things. Um, and so... Um, yeah, just I kept it because it all fell in the tub. And so what I loved about it was that it absorbed the water and it got really warped. And so it really gave me the opportunity to um, explore ruining a book, you know, which was really difficult to do, um, especially one of my daughter's favorite books. Um, so this was a lot of different little I love um, those umbrella drink umbrellas. Um, <laughs> and little pockets like with those like threads to fix sweaters you know what do you do with them but they're so beautiful <laughs> they're ubiquitous I <laughs> can't get away from those right and I just love like the keys to you know suitcases that why um, <laughs> and you know so my mom's a seamstress and it's just another ode to her so I was always trying to find clever ways to share my daughter's like history with her in mm. art and this was one of those ways um to do it and like her little story times to bedtime is when we would talk about um grammy and grandpa and things like that and then you can have a, a party in your dreams tonight was one of our favorite little phrases uh, oh that's yeah so it's really boring. fun but um i'm really glad you guys have this class uh, i love altered books and i'm always so interested to see what other artists do um and especially like uh your magazine with the um, landscapes was just uh, the book with the landscape and that you're a landscape painter that just really tagged my heart. I'm excited to um, to like go tear into some of uh, mine and do some sketching with uh, with some landscapes. That was really inspiring. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Cindy. Wow, inspiring. <laughs> Is there anyone else who has something? And I know a lot of people said they came in late or they're working. Is there anyone else who would care to share with us this afternoon? Because it really, I think it's helpful going forward because you'll see things like the mirror. I never would have thought of that to add mirror uh, into my work. I love that. It seems like Autumn has been working hard this whole time. 
<laughs> yeah, I did. And um, I just started working while we were talking while you we were talking. I was using an old book from my classroom. Basically, what I've been doing is finding pictures from the back of the book, cutting them out and collaging them over some of the text. And this one's difficult to see, but I used one photo to create a frame. It's like yeah. a panoramic city photo, but then yeah. there's more of a close up. And then I was going to cut out these arches and put something else on the next page. Right. Um, and I've been gluing pages together too to make them more sturdy. And I would like to say I have my bone folder that I got in my bookbinding class in college like 25 years ago, and it's still going strong. So if you invest in one, it will last forever. Thank you. <laughs> That's great to know. Oh my gosh. No, I think um, uh, Autumn cutting out um, uh, just just from images that you like. And I, you know, I was saying that I also use in um, the landscapes, the the beautiful landscapes actually of the desert, but using illustrations like this as a real contrast, both in terms of the material the this is very absorbent material where the mm -hmm. photos are on um glossy paper uh you know and you this can feels like newsprint yeah yes. and it's very old and dated so you can tear the edge and get a really nice kind of deckled edge from it so um but cutting cutting into a book revealing what's underneath cutting another uh, shape into that, revealing a, a third level, fourth level, uh, that kind of layering can be very exciting and somewhat unplannedful. I mean, you can't really, I mean, you may start out with a, okay, I want to do this, but then um, at some point, it, it, this kind of mystery of the altered book takes over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Becomes a happy surprise for sure. Yes. I, I have a, a background, so I don't know if you can see this. I went looking for some old um, altered books and I'm, I'm what this one looks like it's in bondage because this book has like twine wrapped around it and screws. I don't know what kind of mood I was in when I did this book. <laughs> it's a little interesting, but you know, social and emotional is not always about happy, happy, joy, joy. It's about what's going on, right? And then I found <laughs> another one um, that I traded back and forth with another artist when I opened it up and I hadn't even looked at this for a long time, there was a book within a book. So there was like a little book that we carved out this book and then, you know, painted it. And then there was like, we split our image because he did half the book. I did half the book. And then I had like poems. Oh no, wait, there's a picture of my twin daughters there. Um, so, I mean, when you talk about a work that's personal, it's like a picture of me in high school, more poems. Anyway, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a personal project. It's a long-term project. I like, oh, I have like a Catholic page here. It looks like, a lot of <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. It says, to whom do you turn when there is no one else? This is a time of my life, I guess. <laughs> it was a dark time or something. But anyway, I think that's why I revere it because there's just so much there. It's, it's needy. You can have a lot of fun with it and kids can partner and it can be long-term. It can go home and come back. And so I think there's a lot here. But we just have a few more minutes. So um, if there is someone else who's willing to share, we would love that. And if not, we'll hang around for a bit and answer questions. While we're waiting, I'll show you another photo album I did <laughs> using a license plate. And actually, I found books that have been made out of license plate that have hinges really? and pull and everything else. But I just used a straight license plate. And again, this is just these. So these will be pictures from Montana, obviously Buffalo, right? Mm. So uh, this is our it's kind of national Montana memories, but uh, I just uh, now I didn't I didn't take go and take someone's plate for this. This was a plate that I found. That you, was, that you found in air quotes. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Um, we we just hope that you feel you can use this type of art form in mm -hmm. your classroom. It is for a and longer that, range projects. Yeah. And that we can, in a small mm -hmm. way, protect your thinking and working and planning and playing and being a part of art in your life and life being a part of 
all of the people that we're working with today. Right. Right. So thank you. Yeah, we absolutely. Yes, we thank you for the work that you do every day for students. And it is really lovely to have professional learning that supports art making and even not in the classroom, if it supports your personal art making as yeah. teachers, we yeah. love that too. We love it. We love it all. So yeah, the yeah. 11 a.m., the 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, I think that wraps it up. So thanks to okay. everybody. Thanks. We're going to have a survey coming out in just a few minutes and also the slides so that you can um, use this towards you know, teaching a lesson if you'd like, or go back and refer to some of the wonderful resources that Dennis and Joan uh, took the time to put together for us. So we appreciate them very much, bravo. And we appreciate oh, Rebecca yeah. and Everybody. Liliana for Everybody. supporting us. Everybody. And we hope you'll sign up for one of our classes in the future. Thanks everybody. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.